All right, welcome back. This is General Games coverage of Gen Con 2017. I'm Scott. I'm here with Lucas Litzinger. Is that, did I pronounce that right? Yeah, you yeah. did. I Good did. job. Yeah, you got it. Uh, you're the lead designer for Star Wars Destiny. Uh, I've got a few questions for you. I'm sure our audience would love to hear from you. Uh, first of all, great job. Thank you. Absolutely fantastic job. We love it down in our, down in our country, down in the bottom of the world. <laughs> our humble population. Uh, first question... What, what do you see uh, with Empire of War? What's the first like, big change you think will happen to the sort of metagame? Yeah, so I, uh, one of the things we wanted to push with Empire at War is making supports a little bit more viable, make them more competitive. So I think you'll see more vehicles on the table. You'll definitely be able to get more use out of your supports than you had previously. And so like, that will definitely shift, shift up the meta and potentially even maybe like slow it down a little bit. And so I think Empire War is really exciting because we're going to see hopefully some different archetypes up here and also you know we will see perhaps a couple of answers to some really powerful cards and uh 24 more characters just like 24 more characters yeah, it just makes the possibilities just go through the roof like it's crazy well that, that's awesome to hear man now i know you can't give us any specifics on cards that are not released but are there answers to supports coming out in this set as well as uh more supports yeah there are a couple answers to supports as well there are also a lot of answers right now in the environment that people just don't really play yeah. like sabotage is a great i was just talking to a guy who was like sabotage was like so good for me over the course of his last couple games yep. and so it's like there's some answers already baked in and now those will become more important all right, well, that's awesome to hear. Now, you said you want to slow down the game a little. Now, is that a, is that a conscious decision you put into Empire War? You want to make the game a little slower? I wouldn't say it's necessarily a conscious decision in Empire War, but like I think it's kind of a result of pushing supports is slowing the game down a little bit. And so even if like Empire War comes out and it's like maybe the game isn't quite as slow as we want, we've seen a lot of aggro decks, so like Pomaz, obviously, and uh, you know even Vader Guard is pretty aggressive. Uh, games don't necessarily last a long time. I, honestly, I do think like four or five rounds for a game is, is a great length for it. But like when your game is ending like turn three, like because of thermal detonators, and Millennium Falcons, and Fn, you know, Balos Ambition sort of combos, like that's definitely something we'll watch. So we'll see how Empire War does, and then we'll uh, adjust from there. All right. So I completely agree. I think the game turn five, turn six is about where I feel is a, a whole game has been played. Uh, are there any cards currently? Like I know you've uh, routed a couple of cards in the past. Uh, I, I respect the hell out of that. Like, just if there's a problem with the game, yeah. fix it on the spot. Let's keep playing it. Uh, are there any cards that are on your sort of watch list going forward? I mean, honestly, I think FN is definitely on a watch list. Yeah. And then uh, you hear a lot of people complain about Pomaz as well. So like that is a deck that we have taken action against. We eroded fast hands just to make that counterplay against that deck a little bit more interesting. And uh, you know, you saw six Pomaz on the top 16 here at Gen Con. Uh, but only one in the top four. And so it's like a deck that is good and it's very consistent, and I understand why people don't always have a great time playing against it, uh, but it doesn't necessarily win. But that's still a deck that we'll watch and well, yeah, sure having, doesn't become too dominant. Having a dominant deck isn't the end of the world. Like, th there will always be probably a, a right. slightly better strategy than others, and that's totally fine, as long as it's not, like, miles above the rest. Uh, very uh, Locally to us, we've seen uh, the success of Holocrinless Vader Raider. Have, is that... Is that deck on your radar at all? Is Darth Vader on your radar at all? Vader's not really on my radar I'm much. Glad. Yeah, so I think he'll be around for a while. I'm glad. I think that card's awesome. He really feels like the Sith Lord himself. I, I don't think he needs any issues at all. But I mean, that's the promo at Gen Con this year. It's yeah. uh, Vader <laughs> Sith Lord, so he's going to stick around. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Uh, do you want to tell me uh, where, like, where you started designing this game, like where you pulled the inspiration from or anything like that? Maybe your history in design in general? Sure, yeah. So I've been with FFG for like six years and like I've always loved collectible games since I was like a kid. And just the ability to kind of put, you know, your own personality into the deck that you're playing and kind of approach the game with a play style that like feels right to you is really exciting. And so like being able to create one of these games, I worked on like Android Netrunner and I got a lot of experience in like living card games and so on and so forth. And so it was kind of strange, you know, transitioning from a living card game to a collectible card game because the models are so different. But well, it's like it really like brought back a lot of nostalgia and a lot of like the love that I had for CCGs growing up working on Star Wars Destiny. And so like I pulled a lot from like just the various CCGs that I played. And also I, I pulled a lot from some of the other games I worked on. And like I felt really strongly that I wanted a game that wasn't going to be super complex in the timing. And so it would just be like back and forth actions. You do something, I do something. Uh, and you also see that in a lot of like digital games right now. Like interrupts don't always work very well in the digital space. Well, they don't. You're right. And so like that's something that I want to implement in kind of a physical space as well because it just creates a nice flow. 
All right. Now you mentioned you like that back and forth. Now I know some people are crying out about the action cheating. Uh, honestly, uh, the, with the change to fast hands, it makes the game, at least in my opinion, a lot, a lot more close to the way I think you wanted it. How do you feel about action cheating as a whole? I think action cheating is important to have in the game. It really allows you to counter control and to pull off surprise moves. The only problem is when you have action cheating, that actually becomes a little bit too effective and too efficient. And so like when you have action cheating on something like a character of Ray or even like Maz, like that's where it becomes potentially problematic and that's yeah. why like we definitely want to take a close look at those characters because then you're not really paying anything for it. Tactical Mastery is a fine card. Like you have to pay a card for it, you have to pay a resource yeah, for I it. Yeah, I think Tactical Mastery is a great design. Right. And so like action cheating of that sort will always be in the game and we will allow cards like that to exist. But we just want to make sure that we don't create more problems with free action cheating moving forward. Yeah, okay, awesome. Now, uh, we talked earlier about the uh, about the sort of length of the game. Is there any possibility going forward that we may switch the, the tournament structure to best of threes the whole way through? I would find that pretty unlikely, but okay. uh, it's an interesting idea. Yeah, because uh, at least in the tournaments I've run, we found that 35-minute rounds have been finishing in the first 10 minutes, 12 minutes, and we could easily get a 50- a to 60-minute round with three games done every round. Potentially. Uh, mm -hmm. However, if the game does slow down a little bit and you have two slower decks going up against each other, you might find that you want that 30, 35 minutes to finish the game. 100%. You don't want to rob those players of the experience. Exactly. So it's been great talking to you. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, we'll uh, catch up the rest of the con and we'll talk to you later. All right. Thank you very much.